Hello everyone. Okay, I hope that uh, you're doing fine this weekend. You'll get a little bit more busy because you'll be preparing for your CA1 exams. But uh, what I'm going to go through is this uh, 2015 paper. But I'm just going to focus on the synthesis and transformation section as well as the comprehension uh, passage itself. Okay, for the rest of the answers, you can download at the link below. All right. I'll also email a copy of the answers and uh, some of the notes that are written and uh, scribbled at the sides. You can also take a good look at them. All right. If you are ready, take it out. Uh, take out your two thousand and fifteen CA one English pa practice paper, and turn to the page where it is a synthesis. All right. Let's go. All right. For section H, synthesis and transformation you are to rewrite the given sentences using the words provided your answer must be in one sentence okay so for 66 this is in reported speech how do you know that it is in reported speech is because we have this uh, open inverted commas okay so 66 it says we built these sand castles ourselves the children said so in reported speech, we'll say, the children said that, remember the notes I gave to you, there's a P-A-T that you got to remember. P stands for pronouns. The pronouns, you got to change it, okay, to be, it is reported by someone else, okay. The pronouns, A, the adverbs, the adverbs of time. It's, if it tells you today, you got to change it to that day. If it says yesterday, you got to say that the day before. This week, you got to say that week all right so there, there's a change in the in the adverbs and last but not least the tense if it's in past tense it needs to be in the past perfect okay so there, there are some of these changes that you need to take note of so in this case the children said that we you need to change it to they they had built so built you change from past tense to past perfect had built these these you need to change it to the opposite. There will be those sand castles ourselves. That is the pronoun again. You gotta change it to themselves. I read this again. The children said that they had built those sand castles themselves. Okay, and uh, moving on to sixty-seven, Tom has to practice the piano pieces every day. He will not pass his music examination. So now I have Tom. This is my subject. And uh, you realize that um, the following, if we join these two sentences, the second half, you will need to use a pronoun. Tom will not pass his music examination unless he practices the piano pieces every day. So there must be a cause and there must be a contrast when we use the connector unless. Okay, so therefore, you cannot use it the other way around. You cannot say Tom practices the piano pieces every day unless he will not pass his exam. That doesn't make sense. All right. Moving on, 67. Mr. Chan praised the students for behaving well during the assembly. So now, Mr. Chan is my subject. Praise is my verb. Praise who? The students. And now you see there's a change in the order of the nouns here. Instead of starting with Mr. Chan, we start with the students. So this is what we mean by active voice and passive voice. The students were praised. Okay, so praised. It becomes were praised. Praised by who? By Mr. Chan for behaving well during the assembly. Okay? There's another way that you can write this. The students were praised for behaving well during the assembly by Mr. Chan. Okay? That is fine as well. 69. The cat sensed danger. It scurried away and climbed up the nearest tree. So you have, which one comes first? is because of what all right so using a connector because the be after the connector because it has to be the reason so the cat did this thing the cat sc scurried away and climbed up the nearest tree because it sensed danger okay so far okay 70 everyone in the village respects the old man he is wise there must be a reason again because of something but in this case, you cannot just say because of his what. So you realize there's a change in the, in the word itself. So everyone in the village respects the old man because of his wisdom. 
okay there's a change in the word form sometimes it, let's say you disappoint me the noun form of the verb disappoint will be disappointment okay my mother was disappointed with me then you refer that as my mother's disappointment okay so sometimes there may be some changes in these words all right so now moving on to the comprehension passage remember in class we did this where i acted out and i look at each sentence i ask myself who what where why how i ask the different uh, questions and i also uh, put myself in the character shoes okay ask yourself why did the character uh, uh, do this why why he did certain actions and that would help you to better understand the passage as a whole do not just read through the whole thing and just think of it as a story and then you have to look for the answers take your time to go through slowly highlight underline words and uh, and also write down scribble some notes at the side if it helps you all right okay come let's uh, get started with this it's a very good story the sky was overcast so overcast it refers to it is dark and you will be asking yourself why is it overcast so over, when the sky is overcast is dark it probably signifies that it is going to rain all right john and tom hastened their footsteps to avoid being caught in the impending rain so it makes sense it was going to be dark it, it, it is dark it is going to rain so they they, they move a lot faster the third line they trek through a barren patch of rough land occasionally they will take this shorter but quieter path back home so you realize they don't always take this path so now it is going to rain why do they decide to take this path there must be a reason if it's going to rain and i tell you to go by the front gate to the school bus stop and versus the brown gate which one would you take you will take the sheltered area or you will take the fastest route that will reach the bus stop all right so same for them is because it is a shorter but uh, sometimes a quieter path may not be the best path but then it's shorter they'll be able to get to their destination faster suddenly a pebble struck john on his back they whirled around so when you hit something hit john imagine your john something hit you the first thing you do is that you turn around see what hit you their heart sank when they saw then the big aggressive lot so when your heart sank you see someone like this you know that this person is up to no good second paragraph flanked by his two obeying friends then swaggered aggressively towards john and tom so again it's showing you that this person is not someone to be messed with he had a reputation for violence violence it refers to things like hitting others uh, fighting and so on tom had watched him and his cronies picked on younger boys and beating them up so the cronies just from this word you know that this person then he's not such a fantastic character people who follow such bullies or gangster do you think they'll be any good no they'll probably be just equally bad followers okay or sidekicks so it's not a very good thing uh, when people call you a crony to someone okay it refers to, if you say that you're a crony to someone it means that you are a follower of someone who is quite nasty okay continue it had been it had not been a pretty sight okay when they saw the cronies pick on younger boys and beating them up the tactics used were invariably foul so what does this tell you the way that they 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 beat up people do you think it would be a fair fair manner no i don't think so he would never forget how dan's eyes glinted as it uh, pummeled a bony lad unconscious not too long ago so when he pummeled a bony lad it means he hit this uh, guy until this guy is unconscious yet his eyes glinted it shows that he he's not really a very pleasant person he's actually happy that he actually hit someone the paragraph where are you heading to scary cats green the arrogant tyrant he stared the duo in the eye so it shows that He's about to do something putting on a brave front tom firmed his voice and pleaded how would you firm your voice 
when you see someone that you're very scared of, but yet you are firm. So he pleaded, Just let us go then. We are not bothering you. Do you think he's very, very firm? Not quite so, because the second sentence tells us that his voice betrayed his confidence. Although he said that thing, but he wasn't confident. In fact, he was feeling a little bit scared. Tom stood dumb before the bullies, cowed. So he's feeling a little bit timid already. Red with fury, the palms of Dan's massive hands grabbed hold of Tom's scrawny arms. So what did Dan do? Was Dan afraid? No, Dan actually went over and grabbed Tom and his scrawny arms. That means it's a very thin arm. Oh, you're bothering me, thundered Dan. So now he's getting more angry, fishing out his stainless steel brass knuckle from his pocket. Dan was ready to hammer the victim with his massive meaty fist. So is this metal thing? Even though you do not know what a brass knuckle is, can you imagine if I take something metal to hit you? Do you think it will be very, very painful? Of course it will be. Then there was a flurry of movement. Suddenly a lot of things moving very very fast. Suddenly, Dan's eyes widened with surprise. <gasps> what is it that makes this bully surprise? Dan came face to face with John's slingshot. So John actually have a slingshot. And face to face, that means he put it right in front of his face. John had pulled the elastic band all the way back, ready to release. In the pouch, in the pouch of that band, this little weapon that he has was a rock the size of a walnut so if i were to take something point it in your face and he has a rock about to hit you how would you feel ah this is exactly what dan is feeling the slingshot was pointed directly at dan's face leave us alone dan commanded john unexpectedly the bully backed off looked lost looked everywhere but at his bewildered henchman ah, so he's not quite maybe all this while he has been beating up people he has never had people stand up against him uh uh he stammered maybe you didn't notice but there are three of us and only two of you so although he was a bit scared but was then trying to show that he was scared no he was trying to find a reason that to even uh scare john and tom again John struck. You are right, but perhaps you didn't notice that I'm the one with a slingshot. If you make a move, they may have to give you a nickname, One-Eyed Dan. So what does it mean? When people say that if you make a move, what will happen? With the slingshot, aim at his eye. Why do you think people would give Dan a nickname, One-Eyed Dan? That means that the rock, if it hits if John lets go, it will hit Dan in the eye. Wow, that's very scary, you know. Okay, so Dan's mouth twitched. He was, uh, mm. he studied John's face intensely. Eventually, he lowered his fist. Knowing that they were safe now, Tom was the one standing aggressively. Now, the tables have turned. He was standing before Dan and watching the fast disappearing forms of the bullies as they beat a hasty retreat. So, what does this mean? The bullies actually ran! They ran away! This doesn't end here. Someday I'll make you, f I'll make you face me one on one. So, this is Dan actually issuing a threat. Want Dan as they turned around and scurried off. Scurried away. They run off with a pair of trembling hands. Why would John's hand be trembling? He tucked the slingshot back to his waist belt. Why? Do you think he was really, really confident of beating Dan up? Not quite, because he was still trembling even after Dan left. This actually shows us that he's feeling actually a little bit scared. That's right. They did not say much as they hurried home. In their mind, the boys knew very well that Dan and his henchmen would be back for them soon. Very soon. So as they went back, 
they wouldn't go, hey, high five, yay, we have won. Because the truth is that, although this time around they managed to beat Dan, they are afraid that Dan would come back again. Alright, so that is, that, that is this text for you. The answers and how, uh, as you go through the, the answers that I've uh, written for you, look at uh, the ones highlighted in yellow. Those are the keywords. For some of the questions, it may be asking you for opinions. So you may have a slightly opinion, but as long as you think that hey, it sounds quite similar to what Mr. Liao has written, right? Um, you that um, that will be acceptable. But if you are really unsure, just drop me an email, and I'll just quickly reply you to to tell you or to share with you uh, whether your answer is acceptable or not, or whether you still need uh, uh, or why your answers are not accepted. All right. Okay, that's all for this this uh two thousand and fifteen English C A one, uh synthesis and the comprehension passage. Hope that this is of some help for you even as you attempt the questions. Alright, see you. Bye.